Demo conquering Mega Eagle! So it's tomorrow night now, as uh, all, the, all the spray foam is, is gone off, it's cured nicely. Uh, it's quite cold in here, even though I've had the heater going most of the day. Um, but uh, I just wiped the condensation off, I'm going to have to dry it off a little bit better before I get going. Um, either way, um, I'm going to get started on the, on the continuous layer of foam that I'm going to put in next. So basically we filled up all the voids uh, with glass fibre and then the ones we couldn't get to filled them up with, with expanding foam. That should cut down any air movement along the channels and that and uh, slightly insulate the channels. Obviously the metal itself and the framework is going to be a, a thermal bridge, you know. So, you know, no matter how much, how much insulation I stuff inside this frame, it's always going to conduct, but uh, it, yeah, sheet metal, so it does, it's not an efficient conductor in that sense, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's not like a solid lump of steel that conduct heat away very well, but uh, anyway, the whole point of putting this first layer of foam on, as you can see, it's uh, it's like two or three mil, perhaps, right, less than an eighth of an inch, anyway. Uh, yeah, let me just get that in shot. You see that? Yeah. Oh, you see it in a minute, anyway. Um, the whole point of this is that when we build up our next couple of layers of insulation, um, Jesus, what, what the fuck's happened there? Uh, we won't get movement of air, you know? Uh, so, if we have any air gaps in our next layer of insulation, that air won't be able to get directly to the, the cold outer shell of the van. So, this layer of blue foam is going to line the van completely. Uh, all the way around floor to ceiling, whole way, hopefully without any gaps. Um, <clears throat> get cracking. What I'm doing at the minute is uh, running, running one strip of this foam sheet along the roof, putting, uh, putting a spray adhesive all over the roof. It's Right, a new new product from Screwfix. Uh, high temperature day is very fucking important. Right? Um, I've seen people spend thousands of pounds getting getting their aircraft retrimmed, you know, and uh, and that, and it's just been done with, uh, with what cheapo spray adhesive, and then uh, like along comes the summer. The thing gets roasty toasty inside, like, you know, like any fucking car does in the sunshine. Airplanes exactly the same, like aircraft anyway. And, uh, yeah, all the, uh, all the vinyl starts flopping down and ends up, ends up looking like a, a £6,000 pile of shit. But, uh, this is in some ways more important because if this starts peeling away from the roof, we're going to get, you know, uh, air circulating behind it and we won't even know about it and we certainly won't be able to do anything about it because uh, it'll have it'll have all the cladding over the top so I'm going to try and make this as as good as possible uh, what I'm doing in a minute I'm just uh, putting the glue on going over it lightly letting that cure for a little bit then going back to the previous panel and making double saw that's properly attached to the roof and then I'll put more glue on stick more sheet down and go back to the panel that I just done you know exciting stuff after I've done this big long one the easiest thing to do is then gonna go down cover the rest of the roof and the wall with uh, with vertical sheets uh, because uh, if you can see the see the corner corner structure up there, it's going to be impossible now to, uh, to to put a sheet along that and and actually follow the contours nicely. It just end up a big mess, I think. So, we're going to come come down with a bit, bring them all off this central sheet. Uh, it doesn't matter if I have to overlap a little bit. I definitely don't want any gaps because again that'll that'll let air get to uh, get to the tin. 
Like, believe it or not, I've been doing this for, for, for 10 minutes now. It's already getting warmer in this van. I've got a little heater going. It's been in here all day. Been fucking icy cold, you know. There's condensation on the inside of the van, but setting, setting I start putting this on, I don't, maybe it's just because I'm working actually, but it feels like it's getting hotter. Where's the can on that belief, eh? So, a little word to the wise. Um, I'd, uh, this, this van had had plywood uh, screwed screwed to all the walls and that. Um, now I'll just come along and I'm smoothing all this fucking foam down. And obviously uh, obviously one of the screws that I pulled out has left a pretty big burr behind. And I, I just found it in my hand. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, in hindsight, uh, what would have been nice is to go along and, uh, and tap them all down with a, with a ball peen hammer. Um, I actually did in a couple of places, but I don't think I got them all. I didn't think it was that important, but you know, turns out, turns out it is quite important because you you end up making a mess of your floor like this, isn't it? It's not that bad. It's bleeding quite a lot though because I've been on the beers, isn't it? Anyway. Oops. As you can see, the entire inside surface of the van is now covered in the blue polyurethane foam. Uh, and that is just trimming up a, the, the final floor panel. This is, um, it, the, floor's been, the floor's been covered in the, the blue foam, so that's a continuous, continuous sheet of foam that goes, goes the whole way around the van. There's no, no exposed metal now, and this, uh, this um, foil back, back insulation is going to go on the on the floor on top of the blue foam and then take a take a the original ply floor of the van is going to go back down on top of it okay so I'm just putting the, the last little bit of floor down now uh, all right probably probably 80 percent of this was was reused from the original floor we've, we've turned it upside down where you know uh, where we had a better face on the on the bottom and uh, it's going back down with self drilling self tappers these I've not actually used before they have a, a little wing on the uh, just just behind the drilling portion of the screw which uh, chews up the wood so that it doesn't actually grip onto the wood and pull the sheet of Ply up as you're drilling your way and tapping your way through the steel. So they're, they're, they're um, you know, perfect, perfect for this job. Oh, fuel tank. Fuel tank. So I thought I'd just show you the nice red line I put down the uh, the inside on the floor of the van. Okay, 
Um, everyone knows red lines means brake pipes underneath. Yeah, uh, I just made it up. That's not at all what it means. I've got no idea what it does mean, but probably probably not brake lines underneath. Either way, um, being a French van, there's bugger all going to the back of the van uh, of much importance. Um, the handbrake cables are, are dangling around all over the place. No chance of hitting them with screws. Uh, the electrics are run along with the brake lines so everything everything of importance everything i need to stay clear of with these screws um and these screws are you know are reasonably long because obviously there's a portion on the end of it the bit that does the drilling that you have to get past to do the to, to actually you know set the screw into the steel so uh these screws are protruding probably probably that that much um and and definitely if I was to wind these in over the top of the brake lines, I would, at the very least, uh, set them up for corrosion in the future. Because most most European motors have uh, what plastic coated steel steel lines or, or treated steel lines, isn't it? It's only um, it's only when you're making lines up yourself that you use that cupra nickel stuff that that probably wouldn't matter too much because it's very good corrosion resistance. But yeah, and and obviously at the worst, I could uh, you know I reckon one of these things could easily easily puncture a brake line and I certainly can't be asked to uh, to get underneath this thing and, and start replacing brake lines at the minute right. so there we go um, definitely suggest anyone anyone putting screws down into a floor on a van does a does a little check before and just make sure you're not gonna cause yourself some uh, some some more work okay so the final bit of the story for for part one of this video, uh, you know the basic insulation before we before we start lagging and cladding is uh, is a little bit of uh, reflective insulation. So, um, right, this will be this will be infrared uh, reflecting sheet. That's the idea of it. Uh, I know a lot of people from from the videos I've seen, like not that I've ever done anything quite like this before. Uh, a lot of people will put uh, a foil-backed insulation over the entire van, um, like uh, well, I suppose. So, like, well, you know, if you only want to buy one sort of insulation, that's great, but um, it's really, really expensive and. I'm not, uh, there's not there's not really much point in putting putting uh, an infrared reflector behind uh, your glass fiber insulation. So um, I mean, there, there won't be any uh, the glass fiber insulation is a thermal barrier, um, and there won't be any infrared heat to reflect by the time. You've got uh, the back of four inches of glass fiber. You, you know what I mean, I'm sure. Um, some some people will probably say that I'm full of shit, but you know whatever. Uh, well, the reason I'm I'm using it here is because um, we don't want four inches of insulation throughout the van. So uh, where where we've got a framework like this, that's that's already standing three inches proud of the skin of the van. Um, like we'll put our battens on the edge of this, uh, so that um, so that you know we'll, we'll lose we'll lose another inch on top of these frames, and the whole inside of the van will be flush with itself. But um, in instances like that, where you where you can't afford to put four inches of glass insulation, and yes, a infrared reflector is a is a very good substitute. I mean, it's really the only thing that will work if you've only got a small amount of space to do it. In, you know. But um, but but thermal thermal insulation is a lot better, and certainly as we've done in the rest of the van with the you know with a continuous layer of, of polyurethane foam, the thin stuff all over the van to cut down uh, you know to completely eliminate any any thermal bridges between the outside world and and uh, anything on the inside. Great start. Um, so anyway. Anyway, just a quick quick recap on what we did. We filled all the channels up with uh, glass fibre to prevent 
any uh, you know any any uh, heat soak through those channels you know um, then we've covered the whole fucking inside of the van in this blue foam like right. you know uh, and now by end on on the floor we on top of the blue foam we put uh, a laminate floor underlay and then we've laid the original floor back down on that so we've never got a nice nice hard floor to work off I can cut inside the van again now and uh, and now just on the very high spots we're gonna put this uh, this reflector this bit this bit of the build might be might be similar to stuff you've seen before um, uh, I suppose my my, my dad's uh, you know he studied um, thermodynamics back at Leeds in like you know fucking 5th century BC and that and you know I'm a keen bodger myself like um, the next next few videos uh, will get a bit more interesting like we're not going to do things the way everyone else does them uh, I, you know we've got our own ideas on, on what's, what's a good way to make a camper van and that very excited about a heat recovery system for the ventilation so uh, we're not going to have any openings in the roof we're going to going to use an old intercooler and uh, pipe the humid hot air through the intercooler and hopefully heat up some of the air, the cold air we're picking up from outside to pump into the van. Um, uh, we want to, we want to, well, operate this van in, you know, minus 10, minus 20 and and run it on a 150 watt heater, you know, so there's there's no, not going to be any gas, there's not going to be any fucking uh, solar panels fixed to the roof that we might have the ability to put them on later, but, uh, but certainly that's that's the aim of this build, you know, and keep it completely fucking stealth. So uh, we're going to do some some weird stuff. Uh, some of it might not work. Some of it hopefully will work. Uh, but uh, you know, if you if you if you want to see more, stay tuned, subscribe, and that, and right, like, you know, hi to all the all the regular subscribers and, and new ones from from elsewhere, and that. Right, catch you again next time.